Abandon me not, O Lord, mainstay of my deliverance. Today, we celebrate the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. The parish bulletin found at the entrances and on our webpage contains the music and readings for Mass. Today's Mass intention is for the repose of the soul of Jeffrey Allen Mart. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Eubel, and assisting, or uh, excuse me, concelebrating at this Mass is Father Joseph Bambanek. The opening hymn may be found at number 704, Lift High the Cross, number 704. Let us stand and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord has given us a beautiful day, fall day in which to give him praise and glory. Let us begin, as always, however, by pausing to acknowledge our sins, so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We pray. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments which I enjoin on you, and thus have long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words, which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him since he lives forever to make intercession for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priests, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests. But the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, the first is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said teacher, you are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. I put that phrase and this passage from today's gospel on my holy card when I was ordained over 32 years ago. A lot of that had to do with a trip I made to the Holy Land the summer before priesthood ordination when I was preparing for the diaconate. And that entire summer, six-week study program, left a deep impact on me. But it so beautifully and succinctly summarizes what it means to be a person of faith. When Moses was speaking to the people about his vision for their future, he gave them a roadmap. And the roadmap was one of the best known phrases in all of scripture. You heard it essentially twice today. 
Tracy read it in the first reading, and then it's repeated essentially in the gospel. To love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. The Shema prayer. Observant Jews print this passage on a special scroll and place the mezuzah on the upper right of the doorpost at an angle. And you'll see this in various places. Taken from Deuteronomy, it's a centerpiece of Jewish piety. And it signifies the monotheistic tenets of our Jewish brothers and sisters. Its twice daily recitation is a mitzvah. It is a commandment. It appears as well in our gospel. And in acknowledging the centrality of love, our Christian faith has retained the core of this passage from Deuteronomy, while at the same time giving it new depth and breadth. So Jesus unites into a single precept the commandment of love of God and love of neighbor. First from Leviticus, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and also in Mark's gospel. But since God has first loved us, love is no longer merely a command, it is a response. And that's what I'd like to talk about for a few minutes today, if you would be so kind as to lend an ear. Pope Benedict XVI commented on this passage in his landmark encyclical, God is Love, Deus Caritas Est. There is only one God, the creator of heaven and earth, he wrote, who is thus the God of all. Two facts are significant, he says, about that statement. All other gods are not God, and the universe in which we live has its source in God and was created by him. You see, today the term love is often misused, or it's used in so many different ways, it's hard to pinpoint its meaning. Theologians point to several types of love that were described by the ancient Greeks, and I think they're very helpful for us. The Greeks spoke of bonds of friendship, of romantic love, and unconditional love. And they had their own words for each of those. The Holy Father's encyclical back in 2005 distinguishes among them, in particular, two of them, eros and agape. The first love, philia, is the love of friendship. It's an important aspect in our lives. We all desire friendship. And perhaps we've all been in situations where we felt we don't have enough friends, or we suffered when we've lost a friend, which is a very painful thing to do at any age. That's one level of love. But many still feel they don't have enough friends. I think of the student council election in which the kid gets up and says, now I realize I'm not the most popular kid in the class. I'm running for president. But then again, neither are most of you. So why don't you vote for me because I'm a lot more like you than the popular kids. And he gets elected. A lot of truth to that. Very few people are the most popular kid in the class. I went to a grade school reunion a week ago, had a wonderful time. But it's amazing how 40 plus years can change people and yet we can all come together. And all those parts of grade school seem to fade away. We don't worry about who was the most popular. Now when we speak about agape, that's a different kind of love. It expresses the experience of a love which involves a real discovery of the other. Moving beyond any selfishness, love now becomes concern and care for the other. And to be able to develop this kind of love in our heart is a real gift. We all know we fall short too often we seek after our own desires, our own pleasures. Eros, that love, needs to be disciplined and purified. It is the romantic love. 
And these are difficult lessons which our young Catholics learn, with which they struggle, and we in the church need to be here to support you. Because sometimes people are searching for love and they're settling for something much different. It's so much deeper than a physical attraction or physical union. When body and soul are intimately united in the bond of Christian marriage, Eros love takes on its full meaning. But even then, it can't stop there without unconditional agape love. The Pope noted in that encyclical that the human person is a unified creature. We are composed of body and soul. Only when both dimensions are truly united do we attain our full stature as human persons. And Eros love is able to mature and attain its authentic grandeur. My brothers and sisters, sometimes, and I think this is especially the case for parents, they believe that their salvation must be attained through a self-giving love that knows no ends. Parents work hard, and I hope every young person who's here tonight knows that. Their love for you as their children knows no bounds, even when you don't feel it, even when you question it, even when you disagree with decisions they make or consequences for actions that you may have taken. They love you unconditionally. We must strive each and every day to love, even in difficult circumstances. But here's the other point that the Holy Father made in that encyclical. He said Christians need to receive love. It can't all be about self-sacrificial giving if we are unable or unwilling to receive love. And some people, believe it or not, struggle with that. Maybe you paid somebody a compliment, and the first thing that they do is they brush it off. Instead of accepting it, thank you for your kind words. It matters little whether we know intellectually that we are loved. We need to hear it. Children need to hear it from their parents. Parents need to hear it from their children. Spouses need to say it to one another. You're never, ever too old to say I love you to a family member. Far from being empty words or platitudes, they are vital communications that we must both speak and hear because they flow from the very source of love, God himself. Deus caritas est. My brothers and sisters, if we allow ourselves to receive love, we will be stronger Christians. God's statutes, his commandments, will not be as burdensome because we will see in them a path to peace, to happiness, and a long life with God. So let us recognize the self-sacrificial love that others give to us, be grateful for it, desire to live that love ourselves. When we say to one another, I love you, especially in our family, we're saying the exact same thing to God himself. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Giving thanks to God unceasingly, we come before him, humbly asking that he hear and answer our prayers. For Pope Francis and Archbishop Hebda, may the Holy Spirit guide the Synod's path, that the Church may live in communion, foster active participation, and open itself to mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all serving in public office, May they render to God what is his due and be motivated by a renewed commitment to foster peace and justice for all God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Catholics, may the graces of the Eucharist give us the wisdom and courage to give witness to the sanctity of all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for a greater willingness to evangelize. May we love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and strength, witnessing to the power of God to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are sick, lonely, and isolated, <laughs> may they be comforted by loving friends and family and granted the grace of both physical and spiritual healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead and all the souls in purgatory, may they share in the banquet with the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we seek to love you with all our heart, soul, and strength. Be merciful to us and grant these petitions we presented for we make them in faith and humility through Christ our Lord. Amen. The cathedral parish is dependent upon the financial support of her cherished parishioners and many welcome guests. There is a QR code in the parish bulletin from which to donate electronically. You may also use any of the four stewardship drop boxes for your offering at the Selby and Dayton doors. We thank you for your generosity.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the worlds. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to another a sign of peace. Just a brief reminder, especially if you have any visitors today, for those of the Catholic faith who are properly disposed to receive communion today, we enter the aisle closest to the center from wherever you are 
as soon as somebody comes to your section. We do ask that you step aside and consume the host immediately before returning to your pew. If you're receiving the hand, please hold your hand nice and flat. And the person can distribute without, without contact. For those who are receiving on the tongue, that's permissible in all sections except the far section and the first half of the section by the uh, pulpit, which is reserved for in the hand only. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Not as me kifetchisti via as Adim plebis me, Laetitia, cum vultum tuo, Bring up your sacrifices and come into his courts. Adore the Lord in his holy temple. Bring up your sacrifices and come into his courts. Adore the in his holy temple. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. Bring up your sacrifices and come into his courts. Adore the Lord in his holy temple. I kept it secret and my frame was wasted. I groaned all day long. For your hand by day and by night lay heavy upon me. Indeed, my strength was dried up as by the summer's heat. Bring up your sacrifices and come in to his courts. Adore the Lord in his holy temple. To you I have acknowledged my sin. My guilt I did not hide. I said I will confess my transgression to the Lord. 
and you have forgiven the guilt of my sin. Bring up your sacrifices and come in to his courts. Adore the Lord in his holy Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do have a few announcements today, so thank you for your attention. The All Saints, All Souls cycle is upon us. We'll be offering two Masses, both on Monday and Tuesday, All Saints Day, All Souls Day, 7.30 a.m. and again at 6 o'clock p.m. While the obligation for All Saints is removed this year because it falls into Monday, we still encourage your participation as one of the great feasts and solemnities in the church year. The 6 p.m. All Souls Mass on Tuesday features the magnificent Foray Requiem, sung by a visiting choir, Monium Corum. It's going to be a, a wonderful, uh, incredible Mass, really. And so I really want to encourage you on All Souls Day to do that. And speaking of All Souls, I would encourage you to take a bulletin home with you, but also to look in the, bullet, in, in the pews for the envelopes to write down the names of deceased loved ones, place them in the four drop boxes, those will be retrieved and all those names will be listed on the high altar in a basket and prayed for in a special way at the All Souls Mass. A donation is very much appreciated, though not absolutely required. Be sure to turn your clocks back one hour when you retire a week. Uh, it starts pretty soon, so make sure you know about that. And then looking ahead, our Cathedral Young Adults We'll be hosting a sock drive again, so it's be a great week to go out and do some shopping for crew sports socks, over the ankle thermal socks. Um, this has been a, a big hit in the past few years, and, and there are many people who are greatly in need. So thank you for your attention to these announcements. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And let us sing number 706 by all your saints still striving. Number 706. Mm -hmm. 